Get your Reap Hobbyist magazine. Hank Wars is on the cover. Get your Reap Hobbyist magazine. Play this issue of Reap Hobbyist magazine. Thomas. Thomas. Hey, Ari, what's is going on, you? man? Yeah, how are you doing? What are you doing here, man? Well, I'm passing out the latest issue of Reap Hobbyist magazine with Tank Wars on the cover. Oh, yeah, promoting the show. Yeah, right? yeah, All man, right, yeah, cool. man. What are you doing after this? Well, I was going to go to Vivid Aquarium to do uh, local fish store travel. Oh, exactly. You want to come with me? Yeah, let's do All right, it. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Welcome to Local Fish Store World Travel. Today, we go back to California to visit Vivid Aquarium. Hey guys, we're here at Vivid Aquariums in Canoga Park. Dave is the owner of the store. Let's go find him. You guys probably have watched Vivid Aquariums videos on YouTube as well. So if you guys watch Vivid Aquariums like myself, you have definitely seen this beautiful aquarium. Dave, why don't you, um, if you don't mind, walk us through some of the equipment that you have for this beautiful sure. aquarium. Absolutely. Uh, I think a big part of any tank is water movement and flow. So we actually have two closed loop pumps uh, and one return pump. They're all the same. It's half horse wave pumps. They put out about 8,500 gallons an hour each. The closed loop pumps draw from two intakes a piece and then push through an Ocean's Motions wave maker back into the display. We have 12 Omniflex nozzles, inch and a half return lines throughout the aquarium. And with the Ocean's Motions, they alternate. So only six of the 12 are on at any given time. So it creates constantly changing current throughout the aquarium. Now, in addition to that, we have big sumps under the tank. Uh, pretty much the entire bottom of the tank is taken up with sumps. Uh, the first sump houses six filter socks, a uh, drain down chamber so the water bottoms out and spills onto the socks. It helps to get some of the air bubbles out of the water. We also have an MRC media reactor where we run Roafoss media, a float valve for when we top off the aquarium. In the middle of the cabinet, we run a big Deltec skimmer, it's a TC3070. Uh, rated up to about 1,500 gallons, and that does a great job of helping to keep the water clean, and nitrates low. And to the right of the tank, we have a third sump with a uh, lot of weirs in it, three weirs to help, again, get out any bubbles and keep them from being sucked into the display tank. And on the far right, uh, our dosing container, we use a GHL Profilux doser with uh, calcium, alkaline, and magnesium, and dose that to the system automatically to help keep all the levels in line. So that's the basic system. We do have an aqua UV, a 200 watt aqua UV in the back. Thank you so much for that tour, but I heard you guys actually have something unique going on with the lighting of this tank. Yeah, one of my favorite questions to ask customers is they know we're doing halides on one half, LEDs on the other is, can you guess which is which? You'd be surprised how many seasoned hobbyists get it wrong. So on the tank, we actually run Ecotech Radians on the right side. We have uh, 11 units up there currently. And on the other side of the tank, we have 400 watt metal halides running the radium bulbs. It's about a 20K spectrum. We set the Ecotech LEDs to match the spectrum of the radium halides the best we could, try to keep the coloration similar. And we're very happy with uh, both sides of the tank. Customers always ask which side is doing better, and it's really hard to pick a winner. What I've said many times, and I still believe it's true, is that a lot of corals look better under halide, a lot, lot look better under LED, but most of them look very similar under each type of light. So I really think you can't go wrong going with LED or halide. Both are good options, but it's a lot nicer working under the LEDs without a 500 degree bulb right there burning your hair off. Hey, that's <laughs> awesome. Hey Dave, you have so many awesome frag tanks here. Can you tell us a little bit about what makes each one unique? Yeah, well we tried to do different types of lighting on different tanks. You know, obviously different corals need different lighting and some customers don't have metal halide or bright LEDs. So for instance, this tank has a lot of corals that do well under T5, just lower lighting. The par in this tank I'd say is around 150, maybe uh, in some of the lower points down to 80. So this is a great 
beginner stuff, a lot of these corals got our hammers and euphelias, uh, lobophilias. Good variety of lower light, easier to keep corals for the most part in this tank. This is all one system, as you wrap around here, this is our corner tank. You'll see this usually as you walk in the store. We like to keep our high-end fungias, scalemias, walsophilias, trachophilias in here. We mix it up with some Aussie A-cans and blastos. Throw in just some neat, unique type pieces in here to catch people's eye as they walk in the store. In the middle, this is the tank that gets all the flow of the system for the most part. And high light, we have a total of eight 250 watt metal halides, a 20K spectrum. This is where we keep our SPS. All the returns in this system are also on Ocean's Motions devices, so they always are alternating, creating changing current throughout every tank on the system. And that's important for every reef tank. It definitely makes a big difference here in our display. You walk around the system more, you have another corner tank. Uh, here we have zoanthids, some soft corals, favias, blastomosa. Different types of corals. We have the AI LEDs on this tank. We also have LEDs on the other corner tank. So again, with this system, we're using T5s on some, LEDs on some, metal halides on some. Give customers a taste of all different types of lighting that we use. You look over to the other side here, we have our fish system. Uh, we keep a good variety of reef safe fish here. We also have our anemones in this system, all of our invertebrates like shrimp and snails, all of that type of stuff. You go back to our, what I call our U system. This whole tank is our WYSIWYG tank. This houses our WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get corals that we post on the website. Each of the corals actually is numbered, so that way we know exactly which coral to send to our customers. If we walk back over here, Thomas, I can show you, uh, this is uh, what we call the 800 frag tank, normally just because it sits in front of the big 800 display. But here we have a beginner tank, and that's a, something I like to mention. Uh, we try to keep some low price corals for beginners. We start out at $15. And this tank goes, this half goes from $15 to $35. Try to keep some good options for beginners just to test out and see how they're going to grow the coral without breaking the bank. So this uh, beginner tank we've dedicated to just keeping good deals on corals for our beginning hobbyists and anybody who just needs a good deal on the coral. Behind there, obviously, the 800 tank where we, we farm out our, our nicest stuff. Now, Dave, how can you guarantee that you're giving good fish, good corals to your customers? Well, a big part of it is quarantine. What everything before we ship it out. We have a fish quarantine systems in the back of our store. Okay. And back here, we can show you some of our coral quarantine. We get corals into the shop. We like to hold them here before we put them out for sale. We obviously do dips before we put them into our system. And then before we move them from these tanks out to the front of the shop, we're going to re-dip them again. And of course, we're inspecting throughout the process. This tank is actually one of our tanks where you house some of our more cherry type corals, really rare, nice frags. And throughout the system on the top, in this tank further down, we quarantine more corals. We observe them before we sell them. And also before we pack an order for shipment or we send a coral home with the customer, we're gonna take a very close look at it to make sure we don't see any signs of parasites on there. But I must say, as I've said in other videos, it's very important for every hobbyist to quarantine your own fishing coral because any store out there, as careful as we are, we're dealing with hundreds and hundreds of pieces a week at the end of the day, it's each hobbyist's responsibility to take the added step of quarantining their fishing corals to help protect their display tank from any unwanted parasites or diseases. So definitely invest in quarantining your stuff and be happy you did. Before we leave, maybe showing us some of your favorite corals that you have on display here in the store? I'd love to. Okay, yeah. great. We house a lot of our favorites in this 800 tank. Uh, I have a rock here of acanthophilias. I always love that coral. Uh, Nice fire garden acropora. The red Montipora setosa has always been a favorite. Above that, we have a Terra del Fuego, little strawberry shortcake, uh, pink lemonade behind that, the yellow tips there. Variety of uh, different SPS, obviously. There's one finally coming back here. It's, see it just sprouting up again. It's called our Rainbow Delight. We haven't had any available for over a year, but it's coming back, so hopefully, another six months, we have some more frags of that. We've got a nice red dragon acro, which you love. Also the Vividiconophilia, this is one of our favorites, we've been farming that for over six years now. Um, beautiful rose anemones, got to have some good anemones in the tank. Down here, Meteor Shower Sepastia, love that. Some Oregon Mummy Eye, Chalice. And uh, over on this side of the tank, always love the Ice Fire Echinata from Australia. The green uh, Stylophora, 
And we're trying to keep a lot of nice montes. We have the Mystic Sunset down there. Of course, this blue tang, he loves the camera, so he's always swimming in the shot. And uh, Jedi Mind Trick, Manapura. And who doesn't love beautiful neon maze brain? So that's just some of our favorites, and uh, appreciate you guys coming to visit us and taking the time. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank really you, Thomas. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. This is the ultimate hobby, the ultimate hobby.